Right, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to plug up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Verse 11, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. In this passage, Solomon gives a good summary about life. It has not changed for the past 6,000 years, no matter which dispensation you're at, in the Old Testament, church age, tribulation, millennial, etc. The point is, is that mankind has a time, and we are built up in a world filled with emotions, many different events, conglomerated into one. It can be weeping, it can be happiness, it can be joy, it can be sorrow, heartbreaking, or war, killing, or peace. And I think if we were to understand our history, how we're built up in our own psychology and sociology, then we can understand how to live in life and how to enjoy life and how to survive and to accept things that we don't like to face in life. This is also a passage that would help so much in balancing life when we're living things in our everyday activities that may be out of balance. Sometimes you don't know how much you should do things or when you should put a limit onto certain activities you do. And this passage right here is a beautiful, absolute beautiful summary of everything that you need to know on how to live life the way that you should live. Solomon, he lived a miserable life. And in a book where he lived so much in misery and pain and writing in the flesh, the Holy Spirit nevertheless used it for inspired scripture. He nevertheless used it to teach us something. Solomon, we're going to delve into his mind and into his drunken sad state. He unknowingly gave a summary of everything of human nature and human life that we can learn from. A man who's wiser than anybody throughout all of history. Out of any brilliant man, he had an IQ higher than Einstein. He was wiser than Socrates. He had everything, everything to know about human nature and life. And the Lord used the nuggets and the knowledge he had in his mind to give it to you today. And I would like to share some of that because I can see from my own knowledge and my own experience that some people might wonder where I get all these nuggets and the experience from. I'll tell you one thing. Scripture has always been a hundred years ahead of me. And what I could see from my own life can be delved up from a summary of this passage. And I hope that something you'll take with you for your life to gain greater knowledge, greater experience, and also a better successful life. Let's all bow in a word of prayer. Father God, I pray that you'll fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit because I will need it. Cleanse my sins away with your holy blood. I come before you as nothing, but Heavenly Father, feelings put aside and my own thoughts put aside. I only go by what you commanded me to do, to preach your word. So Lord God, I'm going to preach because that's what you call me to do and the rest is you. The rest is history. You're going to have to take care of everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so bear with me. Now, the first thing that we have to understand is this is life. If you look at verse 1, this is life. You don't want to be born into this world, but the Bible says a time to be born. You never want to die, but you have to die one day. As one famous person said, 10 out of 10 people die. We heard that on the streets, haven't we? A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. 
If we were to understand that that is reality, then we would be more accepting of things that happen in life. A lot of th times when I go through hard times and situations that I don't want to face, one wise man told me, Dr. Peacock, you just accept it. You just let it, uh, let it happen. There's no explanation to it. It's nothing for you to figure out or something that you have to do or surrender to the Lord. You just let it come and then just let it go. Why? Because that is life. And that advice has helped me very much so. Personal one-on-one time. Brother Robert knows what that feels like, all right? It's a huge blessing. You ask him, all right? So that time that I spent with him, the Lord used him to administer to me many times. But that advice has helped me immensely living in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley, Valley pastoring two localities going insane with the ridiculous mandates and then the liberalism that's arising. And plus, I get the online world on my back. With the devil at my heels, what has helped me so many times in life is that these things just come and they go. And that I have to accept it is what it is. You may not like the situation in your home. You may not like the situation in your family. You may not like the situation in your church. You may not like the situation in your life. And you may not like the situation in this church. But guess what? This is history. Nobody liked their church. Nobody liked their history. Nobody liked their lives. Nobody liked their homes. Nobody liked their cities. Nobody liked the things that they went through in life. But that's history and you cannot change that. It's called 6,000 years of human history. History, you try crying away and see if that emotion of yours can change 6,000 years. There were babies and children who died in wars and they cried and they wept for their mothers. That never changed 6,000 years of tragedy. There are so many people, who, millions who wept over their loved ones even right now in funerals. People currently switching to atheism because they beg, why God? Why don't you heal the person? But God never bring back that person from the dead or heal that person. And guess what? Those tears and those cries of mercy never change. 6,000 years of history. People still die. You can be bitter at God. Cry and whine and then use your emotions, but that won't change reality. Emotions never change reality. And you have to understand that's what? That's time. A time to die. You know what that was when you saw that loved one in that casket? A time to die. You know what that was when your relationship broke apart? A time to die. You know what that was when war broke out? A time to die. You know what that was in Russia and Ukraine? A time to die. You know what that was with missionaries trying to run and get out of there? A time to die. You know what that was when preachers have been uh, juggling? During the virus situation with their churches, a time to die. You know what that was when members left the churches and then there was a church split? A time to die. When homes broken and fell apart and there was divorce and children forsaking their parents, a time to die. You'll never change that. And that's one thing that I've learned that gave me peace. You know why? I have to learn and accept that this is reality and it's a time to die. A time to die. A time to be broken. A time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to weep. Because then when is my time to weep? When is my time to die if not now? When is my time to be broken if not now? It's a time to be broken. Do you accept that reality or you don't? That's why people run away from church, don't come back to church anymore, become bitter and become atheists. But guess what? As they're living their atheist life, they're still living a time to die. Yeah. Yeah. You know what people do? The emotions don't change anything. Right. Anger don't change anything. Bitterness don't change anything. It's a time to die. If you accept that reality, you'll get peace. Right. How do you get peace out of that? I get peace out of that because I realize I cannot change any of that, no matter how much my emotions put, are put into it. But I can learn to, but that gave me so much peace because there's one thing I'm different from an unbeliever. 
that unbeliever has to suck it up and just accept reality. I got something far beyond that. I got something transcendent. I can say, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So even when bad things happen in life, I can claim Romans 8.28. If my lost one died and burned in hell, I can still claim Romans 8.28 that God can use that tragedy to probably save somebody else. Probably it will burn in my heart to win witness to more lost souls. Yeah. Even if something tragic and sad happened where I lose my job, I lose money, I lose a home, I can still claim Romans 8, 28 that this is not my destiny. This is not my end. I have a mansion and a home in heaven. God will provide my needs. I claim his promise that God will provide all my needs. You got something transcendent. You got something transcendent. And that's Romans 8.28. Thank you, Lord. You know, Romans 8.28 only means to those, is only meaningful to those when you first accept a time to die. But Romans 8.28 cannot work if you never accept a time to die. You might say, why? Because... How can God use your bad for good if you never realized that it was bad to begin with? If you refuse to recognize the bad, unless you ac accept it, accept that reality, accept the bad thing, then God can start doing something wonderful with your life. You want Romans 8, 28? Yeah. Then you need to first accept the time to die. Amen. Because that verse says, when you go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that verse 3, a time to die. There's something else before that at verse 2. A time to what? Be born. Amen. You know how new things can be birthed out of your life where God can birth something good? When something dies. You know where God can start to heal at verse 3? A time to heal? When there's a time to kill. If you want God to do wonders and miracles and good things out of your life, healing cannot happen if no one got hurt to begin with. How can you consider it when a doctor patches up your arm and then, you know, bandage your arms and then put the medicine on your arm that that's considered healing if you never broke your arm to begin with? That's not even healing. That's not even healing. How can you be considered born again? How can you experience the joy of the new birth, born again, if you didn't even die to begin with? You have to be dead in your sins so you can be born again. So that you can enter the new life. Do you accept your time to die? No, I don't, Pastor. That's fine. You don't have to accept it. Your feelings won't change a time to die. You will die. A time to get broken. Your feelings won't change that. A time to kill. Your feelings won't change that. A time to weep. Your feelings won't change that. A time to mourn. Your feelings won't change that. A time to cast away stones. You'll never change that. A time to lose. Yes, lose. No, not my child. No, not my child. Yes, a time to lose. You'll never change that. Even if God didn't exist. Even if Romans 8, 28 didn't exist. You will lose. That's right. Wrong you never change 6,000 years of human history. Until you get out of that fantastical plane and start to understand reality, you can gain peace. But if you remain in fantasy land, you'll never gain peace. Right. You know what reality is? Everyone dies. Everyone gets broken. Everyone gets hurt. Everyone weeps. Even me. What makes you so special? What makes you an exception to every single dispensation when God has never made any exception in any dispensation, not even God himself? Not even God himself made himself an exception to pain, to mourning, to death. For he tasted death for every man. He tasted sorrow for every man. What makes you a special exception to every dispensation when God himself, God, almighty king of kings and lord of lords, creator of heaven and earth, didn't even make himself an exception? 
How do I get peace? Accept it. You will die. Yeah. Yeah. Accept that reality. And then once you realize, I die. I die. And then you're hurting. And you're weeping. And you're in sorrow. And you're in stress. And you go, I die. I die. Then it feels like hope when Romans 8.28 comes in. Yes, sir. Then you understand joy and the meaning of Romans 8.28 until you understand pain and hurt first. And then you go, man, praise God, I don't have to stay right here. Amen. Praise God, I don't have to stay right here. Thank you, Lord, for that all things work together for good. And then you can feel that hand pulling you up. But you'll never feel that hand pulling you up if you never were down to begin with. See that? You're too proud. You got stiff knees, man. Stiff neck and stiff knees. And because of that, you refuse to bend your knee on the ground and realize this is where I belong. This is what I deserve. And this is my life. You might say, why is that? Why should I recognize that? Because... 6,000 years of human history, all you are is just a blank in a huge timeline where everything comes and goes, even molecules, atom, all creation of heaven and earth is bound by disappearing, fading, survival, living, breathing, being born, creating more, breaking apart. You're, no spe you're not special. Just a speck of dust. Do you realize what you are? And when you realize that, then you can feel that hand of God pulling you up. When you realize, this is where I am. Nobody wants to die. But you can think about that all you want. You can cry about it all you want. You will never change that. You will die. Ten out of ten people die, guarantee. And that healing comes, see, that's the beautiful thing about time. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Is, then you understand the beauty of time is that then you understand healing. Then you understand the miracle. Then you understand answer prayer. Then you understand how God can cause blessing out of suffering. Then you understand beauty. You can understand that more because... If you think, like an unbeliever, it's a world filled with sorrow and pain, so drink yourself silly and find whatever joy in life because that's all you can do in life. What a sad way to live and to die. What a better way to think about that there is hope. That there is hope. That in a world filled with pain and sorrow, that God's promises are real and that heaven is true and that your feelings will never change that fact that you have a mansion in heaven, that salvation is eternally secured, that God will provide all your needs, that all things work together for good to them that love God, that the Bible is true and you're wrong, your feelings are wrong, your misery is wrong, your pain is wrong, and your bitterness is wrong, and your anger is wrong, and you can cry and whine and say, God won't work it for good. There is no God. His promises are not true. Heaven is not real. I could lose my salvation. No matter how much you feel that, you won't change the fact. It is a fact, Romans 8, 28. It is a fact that you have heaven. It is a fact you have an eternal God. It is a fact that he's eternal. It is a fact that he's loving. It is a fact he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Fact, fact, fact. And you won't change that fact. Amen. You believe it's a fact that people die and people break apart. If you believe in that fact, there's a greater fact than that. The born again, regeneration, almighty power of God that the Holy Spirit goes, live. <laughs> Son of man, can these dead bones live? Yeah. And God just goes, give you life. And what you were when you got born again, you were broken down in the mire. That's what you were. And you realize that repentant conviction. I'm nothing. I'm a sinner on my way to hell. Until you break your stubborn knees and you realize that fact. 
I'm broken. I'm not good enough to go to heaven. I'm wicked. I'm a dead bone. I'm a dead bone. I'm a dead bone. And God says, son of man, can this dead bone live? And that dead bone cries out to Jesus. Oh God, be merciful to be a sinner. I trust what you did on Calvary. Save my soul. And God goes, live! What a beautiful time. So many songs about that beautiful time you got saved. That specific time you got saved. So many songs just on that. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. So many songs just about that time you got saved. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Just on that specific time. What a beautiful time. Amen. That's what time does. It becomes beautiful when you recognize the brokenness first. And it only becomes beautiful when you recognize the brokenness first gets excited about being safe from hell unless you realize how horrible hell is unless you realize how dark it is and that it's eternal and that it's real until you accept that reality then you can understand the time of joy of being safe from hell but we live in a godforsaken generation today ungrateful louses who says I'm safe from hell so what I want to go after the world I want to do my own thing ungrateful louse you you know why? You never un accepted and understood that reality of how horrible hell is. You want a time of beauty? You can't say something's beautiful if there's nothing ugly. You got to contrast it with something. There's no healing if there's no brokenness. There's no born again if there's no death. Do you understand the time? If you accept that, if bad things happen, tragedy happens, rough times happen, it's not something for you to figure out, it's something for God to figure out. Yeah. And that's the beauty. He makes everything beautiful in his time. Amen. You just let that go and then just let it go. Just let it happen. Oh, why did this bad thing happen? Always happening to me and, you know, and... What do I have to do? What do I have to solve? No, just let it flow off your back. Just let it go. It just comes and it goes. Let it come and go. Move on with life. Because that was a time of hurt, just like every other time that everybody goes through. And then you'll go through another time of that and another time of that. Pain happens. Hard times happen. You know what you do with pain? Let it come, let it go. Move on. Because that's not the end. The next one will come. Time and tie waited for no man. It happens. Do you accept the time to die? If you do that, you can accept the time to heal. Not only accepting that time, you have to especially understand the times we're living at. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5. Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Do you realize that it's not just the time that everyone goes through of death, pain, tragedy, happiness, joy, good things in life? that everyone's been going through for 6,000 years. It's not just those times. These times you're living in is very special times. Because it's not just the times normally everybody goes through. It's a time of, verse 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You know what the times you're living in is where God is coming soon. You know that? Christ is coming soon. These are especially the times that you're living in. What did you if, you, if you have always 
fantasized yourself about a life of just like an everyday prosperous American, nothing bad happening, guess what? You're for a rude awakening, and the world was, and they were not prepared. Look what happened the past two years with the pandemic. It did not change. Look at, look at what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Not prepared. You see that? Not prepared with the times, and they think that sanctions would solve everything. You know why? Because people just pretend like this will all go away. It's not going to be really that bad how we see it. Let's just keep living under this machine and system of like waking up in the morning, going to work and getting money and then using the money to do things that I want, save up money so I can buy products or use it for my travel expenses and vacation, save up for my next generation. I have to make plans for that. That's not your normal times that you're living in now. You're living in times where the mark of the beast can happen real soon, where Jesus Christ can say, come up hither, and there goes all your plans and dreams. It's gone. You're living in a time where wars is, and rumors of war are coming out even more, living at a times where the governments of this world are uniting into one world order, and especially in these times that you're living in. Why are you having a fantastical mindset of, I just want to be back like how everybody was back then? Especially in these times, you really think you're going to get your way? You really think nothing bad is going to happen to you? You really think that you can be very happy with a normal life? There's no such thing, especially in these times. It's possible that the devil could switch us back to uh, how the world was during the 2090s, but guess what? It's not going to last for a long time because the devil is bringing in that new world order kingdom and it's coming in very soon. And when that thing comes, what happened to all the normal things that you planned in life? As I pastor a church in this area, what helps me immensely to live life in peace and to find joy in life is to understand the times that I'm living in. Not just a time to be broken or a time to die, but especially the times that I'm living in. Did I expect it to be that easy if I were to pastor a church in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley? Did I really expect it to be that easy if I were going to have 326,000 subscribers online? around the world watching? Did I really expect it to be that easy? Did you think it would be that easy, church? Did you really think it would be that easy in the times we're living in? Do you realize the times we're living in? If you understand the times we're living in, you would get more peace. You would get more joy because you would, what? Accept that reality that the world is that wicked, that the world is that hard, and that life has to be warfare and soldier mentality for the Lord. What did we expect? We hear about so many tragic things that happened with our church. Sister Juanita gave a good testimony. Do we think that was never going to happen to us? Did we never thought that that would happen to us, especially where we're at and the times we're living in and the world that we're at? At the 2000s, you wouldn't think that way, at the early 2000s. But now, 2020, 2021, normal thing to fear even some medical expert that you thought would help you, that you would turn to first thing became the last thing now, huh? How about it now? What a strange world. You know why? The times you're living in is different from back then. And until you understand that, then you can understand more of the peace if you understand the dark reality first. Do you understand the dark reality we're in? If you understand those times, you'd be more mentally prepared. You'd be more emotionally prepared. But you aren't because you just let things come and go to you. You let the times come to you rather than you coming into the time. You know what that means? Basically what I'm saying is you're not doing anything about it and whatever happens throughout these times, you just let it come to you and then comes like a shell shock to you, an emotional outburst, and you go, I wasn't ready for this. I didn't sign up for this. 
See, you just let those times come to you. No, you got to know what those times are. Right. And if you know what those times are, then when they start hitting you, you're like, it's about to hit me. Get ready. It's about to hit me. Get ready. It's about to hit me. Get ready. All right. Clench your fist. Lock up. Get ready. Here we go. And then bang. And you're better. Then you're in better condition. If you're more prepared. But if not prepared and you just go like this, like a deadbeat, right? The machine, the matrix, you know? Oh no, oh no, bang, and then you go, oh, what happened? Yep. <laughs> then you become a silly little atheist. Yeah. Well, Hillsong, Hillsong was so good and nice, and yeah, everything will be all right, prosperity, gospel, bang, what happened, Jesus? I become an atheist. Yeah. Oh, wow. okay. You don't understand the times you're living in. Mm -hmm. It's not prosperity, gospel. It's not life gets better and better. It's not your best life now with Joel Osteen smiling at you. Yeah. This is reality! Because yeah. of the times you're living in. If you understand the times you're living in, you'd be more prepared. All right, it's going to come. Get ready. Get ready. It's coming. But you haven't. You know why you did it? You don't. You never saw the times you're living in. Do you now know the times you're living in? If you now know the times you're living in, then you can better use your time, right? Amen. If you understand the times you're living in, you, you would better use your time. Amen. What do I mean by that? Then when a time to die comes, you can never change that emotion, no matter what emotions you put to it, right? But at least you can mentally prepare for it and accept it. And when that time to die comes, you go through that and then... When the time to heal comes, you grab that one too real quick. And then when the time to die comes again, you're like, okay, get ready for it. And then you accept it. And then when a time to heal comes, you immediately run and grab that one again. Then guess what? Then the time to die comes again. And you go, okay, here we go again. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Ah, and then you accept it. Then the time to heal comes and you immediately go to that and grab it. And then you know what that is? That's called life. That's called life. For past 6,000 years, especially in these times we're living, this is called life. A time to die and a time to heal. You know what's really sad, though, is that not only this is so sad that because you refuse to prepare for the time to die, you don't even prepare yourself for a time to heal. And when that time to heal comes, hey, we have an Ionello revival, March, uh, March 12 and 13th, if I recall. The, the date and time. Here it is. And God's like, I have a sermon ready for you that's going to speak to you, encourage you, help you. There's gonna be, uh, the fellowship is going to be great. It's going to revive you. And you're going to see something great. And when that time to heal comes, you reject it. You pass by it because you don't accept the time to heal. You know, that's a sad, you know what's sadder than accepting a time to die? You thought that's a sad part? No. The sadder part is when the time to heal comes, you don't accept it. People don't understand the times that we live in. That is time. And when Romans 8, 28, that time comes down to you, you, ref you don't accept it. That's sad. You know that? When a time of God's promise, I will provide all your need, comes to you, you don't accept it. When a time comes where God is going to give you his joy and peace, you don't accept it. That's sad. That's sad. You know why it's so sad? Because you never got used to accepting times. That's it. It's not about because you did not accept the time to die. No, that's not it. It's because you didn't just accept the times. That's it. You never thought about time. This is reality. Do you, are you, did you wake up and did you s smell the coffee and see this yet? Do you realize you're living right now in so many times right now that you're just bypassing, walking through? Death, pain, sorrow, happiness, joy, peace, 
understanding, betrayal, hurt. Yeah. Do you realize you're walking through that right now or you're not seeing it? You know what you're doing? You're, just, you're that face again, that matrix, letting all those times pass by you. So pray your brother, come on. And then so, majority of you are just so deadbeat, you just go through life like this 80 years, and then you die and you finally open your eyes at the judgment seat of Christ and God says, hey, did you wake up yet? Wow. Whoa. And God's going to play back 80 years of your life. Whoa. And you're going to go, what was I doing? What was I doing? Why, why was I a deadbeat robot all that time? What were you doing, man? Whoa. And that's why when children laugh and say I love you, it doesn't really resonate with you. Because you didn't accept that time of joy with family. Because you've been so used to a time of hurt and betrayal. That's why you don't accept that time of happiness and laughter in church fellowship. Why? Because you've been so used, you've rejected that time of hurt and pain in personal life. You know what the problem is with you? You don't accept the times you're living in. That's it that you're going through. You just don't accept the times you're going through. That's it. You can run away from it, but no matter how much you do with your might, you'll never change a fact of 6,000 years of human history. You will die. As much as a fact as you will heal. No matter how much you're emotionally brought up in that and you reject it and push it away, no, it's going to come to you. Do you realize the times you're going through? That, it's so sad. Every time an opportunity God has given to you doesn't last forever. Every time of joy, every time of friendship, every time of laughter is a time of memories. And those memories you can never trade for a million dollars. Treasure that while you have the chance. We've been here over 10 years. How much of your memories you wasted? Precious memories you could have treasured. Precious moments that you could have clung on to. You'll need them because you need them. At the, you'll need them because you'll need them at the judgment seat of Christ. If you reject those memories, don't cling on to those memories. God will show it to you at the judgment seat of Christ, those memories and moments. And you're going to realize, why didn't I accept them? Why didn't I value them as much? It's so sad. You, you, you do not accept. You reject a time of joy, a time of comfort, a time to be planted, a time to gather stones, yeah. A time to love. You yeah. reject those times too, you know that? You're living in a world of ungratefulness, complaining, whining, negative-minded, depressed attitude, people committing suicide because they're so drugged up like this yeah. with the times. Work, school, get drunk, drugs, come on, come TV, on, TV, on. TV, yeah. internet, break, break, social break. chat network, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, Woe is me. Why won't somebody give me a handout? And, you know, uh, why isn't God there for me? And, oh, come on, make me feel good. Why don't I feel good? And yeah. why did a bad thing have to happen? And yeah. that's you. Yeah. Instead of, hey, Amen. a time to die, a time to heal, a time for God's promise, a time of God's blessing, a time of joy, a time of loss, a time of tragedy. Instead of those things, you see ahead. Yeah. And you say, this is what happens to me. Let's accept every moment. Let's accept every moment. And use that moment to the best that I can. How about that? I love that. When a time to die comes and a time to cry comes. Sometimes we Christian can be so out of balance that we don't even accept those bad times. 
What do you mean? Because I, we always have the mentality, I must be happy in the Lord. I must maintain peace in the Lord. But when the bad time comes, you go, why don't I feel that? You know why? That's not a time to laugh in a funeral. It's a time to mourn. It's okay to cry. It's okay to say, I'm weak. It's okay to be humble enough to admit to God, God, I'm just bitter, even at you. God, I'm just hurt and broken. It's okay if you were to utilize it the best you can. What do I do? Do I, do I pretend to be strong that nothing ever bothers me? No, plenty bothers me. But I don't use that time on the pulpit to give you my bitterness and my weakness and my hurt and pain. No, that's not how I use time right. This is a time to be strong. A time to preach! Yeah. Amen, brother. Preach. A time not to mourn. Yeah. When I go home in my bedroom, that's my time to mourn. And that's my time to pour out my complaint to the Lord as a psalmist said. And I will use every bit of my time for that. That's good, brother. Amen. Wonderful testimony. And then you bring that brokenness of yours into the church and that is not a time to bring it to church it is not a time to bring that broken sorrowful state and pain into the church no it's a time to laugh it's a time to rejoice a time to shout amen a time to run around the room a time to throw a hymnal a time to come on the altar a time to fellowship with brethren that's the time amen. don't bring your broken burden, the sinful struggles you're going with. Don't bring it here. Yeah. That's not a time. It's not a time to do a free-for-all AA meeting. Oh, here's my complaint and all the dirty secrets. We'll, we're going to scream ah, ah, like that. Yeah. That's not a time. A time to call at midnight and bother someone. Wrong time. You know what, you know what the time for that is? Time for that is what were you doing at home? You missed out this time, haven't you? You missed out your time to mourn. You missed out your time to pour out your bitterness to the Lord. You missed out your time of weakness and frailty. Don't pretend you're a strong Christian. I know none of you are. You missed out that time, didn't you? You missed out that time where pastor says, hey, I can open up counseling at this day, this time. We can do it that time and day missed out that time. You missed out your Bible reading time. You know why? You think you're too good for it. Then what are you going to do with your mourning, complaining, and bitterness? Bring it to the house of God? Bring it to your family? Bring it to your spouse? Pour it out to your children? Give it all to your parents? Tell it to your best friend and bet? Best bud and dude in high school or whatever. Bad timing. You don't use your time wisely. You know, what I, you know what you should do? I'm not too good for this. I need the Bible. Open up and read it. No, I'm not too okay to go to church. Go to church. I need this. I need to hear preaching that's going to hit my bitterness, my complaint, my hurt emotion. I need that preaching. Give it to me, good Lord. You don't use your time wisely. You're too busy with work. You're too busy with school. You're too busy with your family. You're too busy with church ministry work and everything like that. Get fired from job and dedicate yourself to Jesus? Is that what I'm telling you? Forsake all your family and then just uh, abandon them and then come to church, dedicate full time? You think then you're right with the Lord? No. You need to spend your time wisely. Spend all that time in that wife, that child of yours at the right time. Spend all your work and effort for Jesus Christ and win souls and come to church and help out the pastor at the right time.
But you know what? You down, you, we are such wicked, stupid, robotic human beings. We mingle the two together. Yeah. And we mingle the two together and mash it all into a mashed potato. And then we go like this. With the times. Let the times hit to us. And then the times hit all, all these different times we're going through. Pain, happiness, sorrow, all meshed into one thing. And you're only thinking about one thing. You know what you need to do? You need to separate all those things and say, this is a, yes, I'm going through pain and hurt, but at that time. I am not going to mingle this with church. Didn't you know some people with the personal pain they're going through, they're mingling that with church? Sometimes it can be a small little problem in church, but they mingle that small little problem in church with some kind of personal thing that they went through, maybe with their, uh, they had a fight with their spouse, for example. And they mingle that moment with that small little incident in church. And you know what happens? When they mingle those two things into one, they come out one miserable lump. You know what you need to know? You need to separate that. You need to separate that personal pain is a personal pain right there. I'm not going to bring that to church. If that small little moment comes in church, let it brush off on you and then enjoy that time of happiness. That time of sorrow is back there. And when you go back to that time of sorrow, go back over there to that time of sorrow and use it well. Yeah. Cry, weep, whatever you want, go ahead, but take it, use it well. Take it to the Lord in prayer. First one, one nine. Turn to the Word of God. Claim His promises. Hear some preaching that comforted and reminded you. Use the time well. No one uses their time well. We're such stupid, frail, weak human beings. We just let the times come to us and we mesh it all into one. And you become one miserable lump, confused lump. You got to separate all those things. What I go through with my family, I have to separate that from what I go through in my church. What I go through with my wife, I separate that from what, what I go through with my work. I separate it all. Amen. Because why? Amen. Those are different times. Amen. And each of those times, I'm going to use it well for the Lord. Amen. Don't mingle it all into one and become so off balance that you become confused and you don't know when to confess the sin or when to uh, hold back the sin. And you become so confused, when should I soul win or when I shouldn't soul win? You become so off balance, you don't know the limit of when I can cry or when I should not cry. You, don't know, you become so off balance that you don't know the limit of when should I be strong or when is it okay to be weak. You don't use your times wisely. If you were to realize these times, these so many different times, you could live life much more better. Then you'll understand Ecclesiastes 3, 2 through 8. You'll finally understand that. When I look at Jean Kim, what do I see? It's at the judgment seat of Christ. I truly understand the time. Because at the judgment seat of Christ, God will show you. Here it is, Jean Kim. Remember that? A time you mourned right here. Remember that, Jean Kim? A time you overcome yeah. the trial. There's a time, Gene Kim, you made yourself like a fool and you jumped into the baptistry and shouted amen. <laughs> There's a time right there, Gene Kim, you led five, ten souls to salvation that one day. There's that time, Gene Kim, you were struggling with a sinful problem and you mourned out to the Lord. There's that time, Gene Kim, you went through a trial and you thought that the world would collide against you and you would quit. There's that time, Gene Kim, that you preached a sermon about not quitting the very next day. There's that time, Gene Kim, that you are about to quit the ministry, close down church, and take away your own life. There's that time, Gene Kim, the next week after you found yourself a new church and new people came in. There's that time, Gene Kim, that you made a stupid, dumb, embarrassing mistake and you lost a couple people in church. There's that time, Gene Kim, that you got an email or a phone call or a person coming into your church. I got saved because of what you preached and taught. Amen. Then I understand finally what time is when I look at myself at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's reality. Yeah. 
That's called life. And we're still here. That's called life, guys. Yep. Do you understand that? Amen, life is not just one little time of sorrow, pain, and hurt, and stuff like that. Life is not all revolved around this time of happiness and joy. Life is all these times. Yeah. As you jump into each time, you should see it. You should know it. You should be familiar, especially with the times you're living in. And as you jump into each time moment that God has called you in, all right, you're dispensationalist, rightly dividing time periods. You ready? All right, we're going to go through 50,000 time period and moments in your life. You're going to have to rightly divide. You ready? Here we go. Sorrow, prayer, Bible reading, go to church. It's going to come. I've been ready for this. Let it hit me. Pain comes. That's normal. Let it, I weep to the Lord. I pour out my bitterness. It's going to end. It don't last forever. It'll end. It's just a moment of time. It's not forever. Why would I let it last forever? It's just a moment of time. My time of happiness will come. Here's my time of happiness. All right. If I go to summer camp, I'm going to make sure that I run a bit. If I go to summer camp, I'm going to fellowship with brother and sister so-and-so there. That time of happiness, okay, uh, they're going to serve free food. I'm going to eat a lot of food. <laughs> All right, that time of happiness, they're going to have some fun times. I'm going to make sure I have fun and not let anything bother me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, a time of loss. I jump in right here. Oh, I lost somebody that I loved. Very precious to me. These feelings and thoughts are normal. I want to quit the ministry. I feel like that I can't keep serving you, God. That's called despair. That's normal to think and feel. I have to turn it to the Lord in prayer and admit to him, I'm weak, Lord. I shouldn't despair. I shouldn't cry and complain, but that's how I am, Lord. So I'm going to turn it to you in prayer, Father. Pastor offered some counseling. I'm going to go to him and talk to him a bit. You know, that book has been in my room. It's about time I read that book. I know Psalms helps out a bit. Maybe I should review that a bit more. I remember a sermon years and weeks ago that addressed my problem. Why didn't I listen to it? It's about time I listened to it. It's, I go through loss, and it hurts. But, it'll, but you know what? God will use it for good somehow. I'm going to find something good that I can use out of this for the Lord. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't lose everything. There are some things that I have. All right, time of loss, time of gain. Wow, we got 10 new people at church today. Isn't that awesome? Oh, isn't that great? Man, pastor's going to teach a very deep doctrine. I can't wait for that day. We got ourselves a new building. What? I can't believe it. We got ourselves a new building, guys. This is just so awesome. Wow. Man. There are people around the world who heard about our ministry and work. Isn't that encouraging? Wow. Time of gain. And then God says, all right, time to come home. And then he calls you home. Time has ended. You, you've you spent all your years, your times, your moments. You, you, you did not waste your times. You did not waste your times. You made sure... You used every time to the best you could. Amen. And at the judgment seat of Christ, you feel more fulfilled, like you accomplished something with your life. Amen. And you go, God, here are my memories. I can't put it all into a beautiful movie clip with dramatic music in the background and you know, funny moments, sad moments, highlight moments. I can't, I'm not a good movie director. I can't do it well. You do it for me, Father. And God says, all right, give it to me. Put your work in the fire. And then he takes that work and then he turns it to something beautiful called gold, silver, precious stones. And then he plays your life. And then we, people at the judgment seat of Christ get a box office seat wins five Oscars, Golden Globe Awards, <laughs> best climax in drama experience. And, that will last and, and here goes the life of you. And then people see you born, crawl, love your parents, moments that you hated them, fights among siblings, 
times that you spend enjoyment with them. Grew up in school, high school. Found a career, got into a good college you wanted. Then you worked your tail off. Then you got the job that you wanted. Got married, had kids. Saving money, trying to do the next thing for them. But it's not a typical boring life like that. It's in between those moments of what were the trials you went through between those moments? What was the trials you went through between college to finding a career? That's the dramatic, those were the pivotal moments in the movie. What were the joyous, funny moments where between your work career to old age? What was the peaceful, satisfactory moments that you found fulfilling within marriage when that scenery is showed? What about the funeral with those unfulfilling, sad memory moments? It's those in-between things that we see within that general life. And then that's where the drama action comes in because God's the one that creates everything beautiful in this time. And he says, let's use every moment for my glory. Yeah. And let's turn it into a great story. And then you'll see amazing moments in your life, precious memories that you can value and treasure all because you used every one of those moments of time for his glory. Amen. When sadness come in, you just didn't let sadness come in. You just used it for the glory of God. When happiness came in, you just don't let happiness come and go. You just used it for the glory of God. It's within every moment of those times you used it for the glory of God. That's where the drama comes in with your movie. And people go, wow, what a main character. And they were rooting for that main character in the movie within every moment of time. And they share in that joy of, they share in that moment of joy with you in those moments of joy in the movie. They share in those moments of sadness with you in those moments of sadness within your movie. It's like a main character that you are. But the devil sure brainwashed the world with TV because he just gave you a different person's life for you to watch, for you to envy, for you to follow, for you to put yourself into. Not your own. You are the movie. If only you would understand how important you are to God. If you would truly understand that God gave up everything for a dirtbag like you, you are a pearl of great price. If you will understand how important you are as a main character in your movie, you would try to root for that main character, wouldn't you, within every moment and scenery in the movie? He hath made everything beautiful in his time. I hope that would be your case at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't let life and time moments just come and go and you waste it. 